Today we're going to be taking a look at the new 2022 Honda Navi. We'll talk about where this little $1,807 and 110 mile per gallon scooter or automatic motorcycle as some would call it fits into Honda's current model lineup as well as its specs and features and what sets this bike apart from the others. Plus, we'll start it up and show you what it sounds like and a lot more as we check out all of the details that you need to know about Honda's latest new addition to their Mini Moto segment. But first, if you guys find any info in this video helpful, please take a second and hit the like button. Liking the video and commenting below on what you think about the Navi really helps with growing this channel through YouTube's algorithm, which in return helps me create more videos and I really appreciate the help. So first up, where does the Navi fit in Honda's current model lineup for the USA? Even though Honda doesn't list this as a scooter on their website, it's a scooter and should also be compared against the other models in the lineup like the models currently available that are on the screen right now. Then we hop over to the motorcycle side of things where Honda puts it in their Mini Moto model lineup where you have a few more options to cross shop the Navi with but none of these have a fully automatic CVT transmission like Honda scooters do to where you can just twist the throttle and go like you can with the Navi. And now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump into some more info on the Navi. Now, do you have any options when buying one of these? The only options you have come in the way of colors and they all share the same MSRP of $1,807. You have Grasshopper Green, Ranger Green, Red, and Nut Brown. <laughs> yep, Nut Brown. Next up, let's get into the chassis and suspension. The Navi has a steel underbone style frame that uses the engine as a stressed member and with this chassis design you have to keep in mind lightness was not a huge priority as that always means more money and Honda's goal when developing this bike was to keep costs down for the Indian market as it was the first model to go from concept to production in India. To give you an idea as to how cheap this thing was, if you did the conversion back when I originally wrote about it in February of 2016, it came out to only 582 bucks which is cheap but sadly the world doesn't work that way nor is it still 2016. With that being said its curb weight full of all fluids is right at 236 pounds and here's how it stacks up against other small models in the lineup. The frame's design helps bring in a super low seat height of only 30.1 inches and even if you're on the tall side it's a pretty comfortable seating position and at 6'2 I have a lot more room to move around on this than I do the Ruckus or Metropolitan thanks to it not having a normal step through design like most scooters where your legs are right in front of you. Now when it comes to suspension you've got a teeny tiny non adjustable 26.8 millimeter inverted fork that brings in right at 3.9 inches of travel while out back you have a single rear shock that's mounted on the left side like a lot of Honda scooters. And that non-adjustable shock helps bring in 2.8 inches of travel out back with it packing right at 6.1 inches of ground clearance. Now I won't bore you with all of the measurements around the bike so I'll throw them up on the screen now but thanks to the super short 50.6 inch wheelbase this little guy has a turning radius of only 6.2 feet so it's super easy to whip this thing around. Part of what helps this bike be so maneuverable are the wheels and you have a 12 inch setup up front that is wrapped with a 90 by 90 tire while out back you have a smaller 10 inch wheel that's wrapped with a slightly taller 90 by 100 tire. And thankfully with tires this small they won't break the bank as you can get a set for less than 100 bucks and if you want a more off road friendly tire that's always an option too. Now when it comes to brakes to help you slow down from those blistering fast speeds you'll be hitting on this thing you have Honda's CBS combined braking system which is a fancy way to say linked brakes so if you stomp on the rear brake it'll throw some front brake in there too to try and help you keep from locking up the rear tire and when it comes to the actual brakes we travel back to the 1800s for a 130 millimeter mechanical drum setup that's used up front and in the rear and next up let's get into the engine and drivetrain the navi has a 109.2 cc fan cooled 80 degree four stroke single cylinder carbureted engine yeah, carbureted in 2022. That was borrowed from the Honda Activa scooter. It features Honda's ESP friction reducing technology which is short for enhanced smart power not to be confused with their ESP plus design for their models with four valve heads as this model has a two valve overhead cam design with a 95 to 1 compression ratio. Part of what comes with that ESP badge is an offset cylinder, roller rocker arms, a double cog drive belt, and more to try to help reduce drag in the drivetrain. And if that ESP tech wasn't enough, Honda also has what they call HET being used on the Navi which is short for Honda Eco Technology which sounds very similar to that of the ESP with reducing friction and improving combustion by optimizing different aspects of the drivetrain. 
This little engine pumps out right at 7.8 horsepower with a ground shaking 6.6 .6 foot pounds of torque, which will propel most people to right around the 50 mile per hour mark for a top speed on the Navi. And per usual with these smaller bikes, there are other factors that come into play like your weight, elevation, and so on. And helping you put all that power to the ground is Honda's V-Matic CVT transmission, so it's a fully automatic setup just like their other scooters. All you have to do is twist the throttle and go after hitting the easy button, also known as electric start, to fire it up which leads us to our next part where if you run the battery down, you also have a backup kickstart to get things rolling again. Now let's bounce around the bike and touch on a few different things. Storage, do you have any? That's one of the cool party pieces to this bike, similar to the NC750X that has storage where your fuel tank would normally be. The Navi has this 15 liter storage box where your engine would normally be on a normal motorcycle, but thanks to this being a mixture of scooter and motorcycle, your engine is out back so you have all of this extra space for activities. It doesn't stop there though as you also have a little more space to throw things under the seat. The Navi also has a side stand, which may not seem like a big deal, but if you want to hop on and off quickly, it makes life so much easier. Go ride a Metropolitan or Ruckus around and you'll find out real quick that it can become tedious always having to throw it up on the center stand, so that's a big bonus in my book and since you can't put the transmission in neutral, you won't be able to start it on the side stand like a motorcycle, so you'll need to throw it up on the center stand if you want to let it warm up before taking off. Tying in with that is also the fact that it has a parking brake so you don't have to worry about it rolling off if you park on a hill. Now I do wish they would have put a little more thought into its design, but it works. Another thing that blurs the lines between scooter and motorcycle on this bike is that the rear brake isn't operated by a lever on the left side of the handlebar like a normal scooter. In an effort to make this more like a motorcycle, they move the rear brake lever to where it is on motorcycles so you're hitting it with your right foot. It may seem small, but it'll definitely help those that are wanting to use the Navi as a learning tool before they move up to a normal motorcycle. And how about accessories? Does American Honda offer any for the Navi yet? Well, you have a few things at the moment. You have a windshield at only 80 bucks with a rear rack at only $50, which also helps you expand its original storage area. And then you have a couple of graphics kits available too. And that brings us to my next point. Look at how cheap the Navi windshield and luggage rack are. If it was for any other bike, they'd be double that price or more and the same follows suit with replacement parts on the Navi should you drop it and cause a little damage. Scratch your front fender? Don't worry, it's less than 10 bucks. Need a new frame? That'll run you less than $200. How about you break your tail light by looping it during a wheelie? No big deal, less than six bucks. All right, all right, I get what you're saying. The painted plastics are gonna be a lot more expensive, right? Nope, this painted piece here will run you less than $20. So long story short, if you drop it, it's not the end of the world. And if you want to do a complete color change because you're bored of what you bought originally, less than $100 and you're good to go. But back to accessories for the Navi, even though your OEM options are limited, thankfully this bike has been in production for quite some time now, so you have plenty of other options from around the world to throw on your Navi. And if you really want to go ham, you've got awesome companies like Man in the Box and Steady Garage here in the States showing you what's possible with this platform if you really want to unload your wallet. Now let's start it up and show you what she sounds like and then we'll come back for a few more things. And that's the 2022 Honda Navi. I'm curious, what do you guys think about the Navi? And what do you guys think Honda should change on it to make it that much better? Now is this little guy for everyone? Definitely not, as a lot of people aren't going to really get what this thing is all about at the end of the day. It's a cheap option for many different needs, whether you're a young student that just needs a cheap way to rip around town, or someone that wants to get their feet wet with two wheels but they're scared to do so because they're worried they don't have the skill set to ride a normal motorcycle, or they may not have the budget to do so. This gives you the cheapest entry in our hobby that Honda has been able to offer for decades now, and the only options that were close to that have had their prices increase year after year until they hit the $24.99 and $27.99 price tags they're at now. 
Plus, the Navi removes some of those scooter-ish looks that are a turn-off to some people. Then you have those of us that have ridden before but want a Navi just because you can't look at the thing without having a smile on your face as you think about what you could do with it. Plus, these things will be the ultimate pit bikes due to them being an automatic so you don't have to use both hands, letting you carry stuff around more easily. And we'll see these across the country strapped to the back of RVs too. As long as dealers don't ruin this rollout by gouging people, these are going to be massive sellers for Honda in my opinion. That leads me to one more thing I want to talk about before we finish off this video. Honda has in their marketing material that this unit is well under $2,000. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but when you add up the $1,807 MSRP with a $100 freight surcharge and tack on their $200 destination fee that most dealers are going to charge, we're not exactly well under that $2,000 price point. I'm not trying to give Honda too hard of a time here, I just think they need to be more careful with their choice of words when marketing this during a time where dealer pricing is very volatile and it doesn't make people happy when their $1,807 Navi is nowhere near that price by the time they're walking out the door. Now thankfully there are dealers that don't charge fees like Southern Honda Power Sports that helps me out with units and we'll talk more about that shortly, but they're the minority and if you guys have a local dealer you'd like to shout out that may help someone save some money, throw a comment down below with their info. Now I'm not against dealers making money, I was one for 15 years, but there needs to be a line. These small mini motorbikes are mainly for fun and what do you do when you play all these games with customers? You're taking the fun right out of it and at the end of the day, making them run to another dealership and 9 out of 10 times, people don't forget, and it's shared all over the internet for even more people to see what your dealership is doing. So why burn the possibility of a larger deal in the future where you could make some real money on a unit over trying to get a few extra bucks on a Navi? These cheap bikes are also meant to get people in your doors, to let them see what else the Honda brand has to offer and you're shooting yourself in the foot by running them off. That's enough of my rant though, I could carry on for another 30 minutes, but I'm probably boring the last three of you left that are still watching. Now is the Navi worth its price tag? I think it is 100% worth its price tag, but once you start creeping up on that $3,000 mark, which is where I'm seeing a lot of dealers put them, personally, I'd have to pass. You're too close to the Grom and other mini bikes retail prices, and there is a difference between them when you start getting up close and really looking at all the nitty gritty details. But let me know what you guys think about it all down in the comments section and I'll be joining in on the conversation too. With that being said, that's a wrap for this video guys. Thanks again for watching and supporting all this. I really appreciate it and we'll see you in the next one. But first, I want to take a quick second and say thank you to Southern Honda Power Sports for opening their doors to me and allowing me to come pick through their inventory for these videos. They are a massive Honda Power Sports dealer here in Chattanooga, Tennessee with tons of inventory from new Hondas to used Harleys and everything in between that they sell to people from all over the USA. So check out the link in the description below and head over to their website to see if they can save you some money on your next toy.